Hello everybody, welcome back, it's Jordan here, and today I have a Lego Room vlog for you guys. Today, before we get started with this video, remember to give it a big thumbs up and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. We're gonna start with a current projects in the Lego Room. I'm gonna show you everything that's going on right now and some projects that I want to complete moving forward into the future. I'm also gonna give you some tips on how to start a Lego city. I also wanna show you how I sort my Lego bricks and some of the atrocious miscellaneous part bins that I have currently cultivating in the Lego room. And I want to show you a big bin of sets that I have and what I plan to do with them in the near future. Not only that, but I want to show you how I manage and maintain the dust levels in the room. I have some uh, key things that I'm going to show you on how I maintain that. And I also want to show you uh, some of the camera equipment that I use to create YouTube videos. So let's jump right into it and let's have a look at some of the projects going on in the Lego room right now. First things first, I was building the Jedi Starfighter with hyperdrive and it was missing an entire mini bag of pieces. It's the first time it ever happened. I did order those pieces from the Lego group. Actually, they're missing parts and pieces. Uh, system online is very easy. If your sets are missing parts and pieces, they're very easily replaced and very easy to order from the Lego group online. So that's the first project that I am working on right now, just at the mercy of Lego shipping me those parts. I am going to be showing you all the camera equipment that I do use. I just stowed the GoPro away and I picked up my camcorder, which has some optical zoom, which is really nice. One of the other projects I got to work on here in the Lego city is increasing the size of the Avengers Tower and also finishing the Sig Fig condo. I want to make it taller and I want to integrate uh, all different apartments inside that tower there. And I do have lots of different uh, people in the Lego community that are working on creating their floors. I think the office tower in white there right beside the Sigfig condo is tall enough, but I guess I could maybe add some more floors to that in the near future as well. The newest project in the Lego room is actually this construction site where we added the crane. But what I do want to add is another mini modular building. I do plan on getting rid of this construction site in the near future once I have enough parts and pieces and sets to create a mini modular building to join up with the other mini modular buildings right there. Although I really do like the look of the crane here in the Lego city. I straight up roll my eyes at this one. I've been meaning to change the color of the signs on these buildings and redo the interiors for a long time. This is the pet shop, but I made it beer, post, and pets using three different pet shops. I do want to make the beer lettering yellow and the post lettering red. And then as you can see, I need to do an interior of those buildings as well. I have no idea why I haven't gotten around to doing that. Just, just straight laziness and procrastination. But that, that is another project that I need to work on. Speaking of procrastination, I definitely need to add some washrooms to my amusement park. I've been talking about that for way too long. I also want to change this train loop right here so that it's a double train loop so that we can have trains going around the Lego city and also around the amusement park simultaneously so they do not crash into one another. I'm decently happy with the train yard right now, although there's not as many trains down here as I would like. I would like to build more uh, train cars and some more custom locomotives. So that is a project that I really want to work on. Also, you can see some of the plates right here are the crossroad plates and they stretch uh, three by four. I would be able to change those if I just uh, forked out a little bit of cash so that I could uh, get some of those larger uh, 48 by 48 gray base plates just to sort of fill the gap right here and make it look consistent all the way through so that's something I need to do also I just want to add a lot more detail just around the track here it's just sort of barren and I need to find out or figure out what pieces to order to uh, fill that in whether it's uh, modified tiles or additional elements that you would see in a train yard uh, as for trains, of course, we've been working on the brick model railroader or have already worked on the brick model railroader cars, but I would like to add some more cars and wagons and custom locomotives to the train yard here underneath the Lego city in the very near future. So another project on the back burner. Yes, I did recently work on the deep sea area and I love the lighting down here. It looks absolutely fantastic. I do need to order some more pieces to create a coral reef. Also order some of the color limb pieces to add some more color to this area and also um, get some more sea life. Some fish, like a school of fish, maybe some more octopuses. I don't think I need any more sharks. There is quite a few sharks in this region. Um, but I did hear there are some new deep sea sets coming out in a Lego City lineup, so it will be very cool to add those to the deep sea scene here underneath the Lego City. 
I like this building. It looks really cool. Um, I could alter the exterior of it to make it look a little bit better and also add an interior. I just need to stop procrastinating once again and get back into the groove so I can create or finish creating this custom Lego mock of a Lego factory. I think it looked pretty cool if there was an interior and some workers and just maybe a little bit more texture on the exterior of the building. I added a river to the Lego city and I actually really do like it. I like how it breaks up the downtown core or the modular buildings. However, I need to finish the water details just like they are on uh, Ninjago city here. I need to add a layer of black plates and then a layer of uh, trans blue tiles on top of that just so it looks the same as the Ninjago city water effect. And if I did that here in the river and also in the ocean, it would look absolutely fantastic. However, it would be a large dollar investment. Speaking of large dollar investment, I need to finish ballasting my train track. It looks so much better when it is ballast. And believe it or not, this is actually not 100% complete. There is another layer of, of uh, plates that should go underneath here to bring it out one stud further on either side. And I haven't even finished ballasting the track all the way around the Lego city. For example, here in the amusement park just has regular RC track and also the train track underneath the Lego city doesn't have any ballast as well. It would definitely be really nice to completely finish this project. But once again, it's just the invest uh, where I want to invest my money at this particular time. So that's most of the projects that I have going on right now in the Lego room and in the Lego city known as Brickminton. So if you wanted to start a Lego city, I do have a little bit of pointers. Obviously I started small and that's where I would suggest you start if you wanted to start a Lego city. Make sure you start on a small table that is in um, an increment of inches in the 10. So 10 by 10, 20 by 20, 30 by 30, 40 by 50, whatever it is, because base plates are 10 inches by 10 inches. So you wanna make sure your table um, can accommodate an even amount of base plates. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 inches. And then your first place where you wanna start, of course, I think, is with some modular buildings and some road plates. And if you wanted, you could add a train track by getting one of the Lego City train sets as well. That's always a nice addition uh, for a Lego City. It's just to have a train track going around the Lego City. But for sure, you want to start with a modular building, maybe some Lego City sets, and of course, the road plates. And then branch out from there and maybe start making custom buildings uh, like the skyscrapers or the Avengers Tower or the police station or the train station over here. Uh, or the Lego factory and whatnot. But I think the best place to start is honestly with some modular buildings because they use some brilliant building techniques in there in which you can use in your mocks as you learn how to build these magnificent structures that can add to a Lego city. Yeah, so a nice square table with some modular buildings and base plates and then just don't procrastinate. Just go from there and go slowly but surely. That's my main tips on how to create a Lego city. When you start accumulating Lego parts, you're gonna have to sort them, of course. I sort my Lego parts by both color and part type. For example, right here is mostly all of our tiles, brown or black, black again, tan and light blue, yellow, pink. And then we have other stuff, like we have um, just white drawers, tan and blue. I don't know why I like to pair those ones up, uh, big, uh, gray base plates or dark bluish gray base plates, small dark bluish gray base plates, and then dark bluish gray miscellaneous. Then you can subsort them if you have a lot of different parts of a certain color. Then you can subsort them into smaller bins like this, or um, large separators like this here. Or you can even just use um, large freezer bags. Like I have large freezer bags down here that are all sorted by color, sort of a mess, but you can see there's dark bluish gray bricks in that one there, plates in the one beside it, uh, yellow bricks over here and so on and so forth. So I use a combination of bags, large plastic Tupperware or Sterilite containers, uh, Dollarama containers or Mastercraft sort of nut and bolt containers. So lots of different ways to sort it. Um, I generally start by sorting by color or part type 
and then just sort of go from there because it really depends on what you have is how you're going to determine how you are going to sort your Lego collection. I am definitely not a master sorter. I have a lot of Lego pieces that need to be sorted. This is the bin that I have here from when I was a kid. It's just so many miscellaneous pieces. I wish I still had this set. I don't know what it's from, but like, wow. That looks like a cool piece of a boat haul. But there's all sorts of pieces in here that I still need to sort. And then this is my miscellaneous piece bin that I need to sort that I've accumulated just over the years. I got all the, the extra pieces and everything that I get, I, I dump in here for some reason. You can see there's sticker elements in there. There's train chassis, there's brick separators. There's all sorts of stuff in there that I still need to sort. Sometimes when I just get like a big hoard of pieces on my table, like that one there, I just end up dumping them into this bin. I'm like, ah, that's future Jordan's problem. This is probably one of my favorite bins of parts because it's actually sets with instruction manuals. I bought these all in a big lot from a garage sale for a really good price. Um, there's a lot of missing pieces in these sets, but it's something I definitely have to go through because I honestly couldn't even tell you what is in here. And what, what I want to do is I want to do a live stream of me dominating this bin here, going through it and building all the sets uh, in this bin in a live stream. I think that'd be pretty exciting to find out what's in here together. So make sure you stay tuned for that live stream coming out in the near future. In regards to cleaning Lego, honestly, it's nothing too out of the ordinary. I do like to use my Dyson hand vac to suck up the dust off the base plates and off the road plates. Obviously, you have to remove all the minifigs and loose parts before you do that because the vacuum cleaner will suck them right up. I also like to use this Swiffer here. The Swiffer is very effective when it comes to cleaning Lego. It does extend and flex and move so you can reach way out there into the middle of the table. That's the two main tools that I use to physically clean the Lego sets here in the Lego room. Unless they're really caked with dirt and they're really dirty, then honestly, I just use like um, soap and water and a brush in the, uh, the sink and just clean them in the sink. One other key thing for cleaning not only your Lego, but your Lego room is just a vacuum cleaner. Just make sure you vacuum a lot. That minimizes the amount of dust circulating in the room. So I use this Dyson vacuum here to uh, vacuum the carpet. Then I use this Dyson vacuum, the smaller guy in the family, to uh, vacuum the actual physical sets. Other things you can use are cans of air. They do a really good job of spraying the dust off sets. However, the dust just settles somewhere else. And also little mini paint brushes work really good or makeup brushes to um, get all of the dust together and then you can suck it up with the vacuum. So that's how I go about cleaning or managing the dust here in the Lego room. As much as I love Lego, I am also a tech guy. I love technology. This is most of the camera equipment that I use to create my YouTube videos. So for my live streaming, I use the Yeti mic and I use this little Logitech 1080p 30 frames per second uh, webcam. For my vlogs, I use my um, GoPro Hero 6, I believe it is. Also, it has that little adapter there so I can hook my lapel mic up to the GoPro. I use my cell phone, that's a Samsung Galaxy S10 for photos. I find it has the best photo editing apps and also takes the crispest photos. It's better than any of the camera equipment that I use. Also, we use the uh, Manfrotto tripod uh, for uh, live streaming and anytime I need to use a tripod. And then, of course, there's the camera that I am filming on right now, which is the Sony Handycam FDR AX53. And this thing is absolutely incredible. I bought it last year and I have absolutely no regrets. The zoom on it is simply amazing. And I, I'm in love with this video camera. Before we get going here today, remember to comment on the video where we're giving away two of the Lego Star Wars ATST Raiders from The Mandalorian. And you can see that video popping up in your screen right now. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this Lego Room vlog for April 2020. If you have any questions at all, make sure you let me know by commenting below. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe for some more great content coming out in the very near future. Thank you very much for watching and have yourselves a great day. Bye for now. I wanted to give a special shout out to all the people who supported me using Super Chat and Super Stickers during my live streams. 
Thank you so much, it's highly appreciated, and make sure you stay tuned for more live streams as I'll be building all of my LEGO sets using the live stream function here on YouTube. Thanks a lot, stay tuned, and we'll see you again. Bye for now.